Hello dear chess friends, I'm International Master Andrei Ostrovsky and you're welcome to the series of lessons dedicated to the essentials of bishop and games. This lesson concludes the portion about same color bishop and games with only a single pawn present on the board. So in previous lessons we already saw such a possibility for the weakest side to place the king. So we can see that the placement of the king is very nice in the sense of controlling the covering square. So the bishop can't occupy it, which means it might be a problem for white to win this position because actually the covering of the diagonal is the main winning method. So here it looks like white uh, only can try b8 square to kick bishop h2 away from this diagonal which is uh, usually not enough for such a situation because uh, bishop is in time to occupy another diagonal to stop the pawn because b8 is not that great square in the sense of blockading the own pawn so it loses the time and gives this time to the opponent in fact there is exactly the problem with that diagonal so white starts with the bishop h4 the idea is pretty simple so white wants to maneuver the bishop to b8 through f2 a7 and b8 so let's have a look first of all what happens if black just stays and waits so let's say bishop to f4 it doesn't really matter where so bishop goes to f2 bishop h2 bishop a7 bishop g3 bishop b8 so everything is standard bishop has to be able to stop the pawn from another diagonal it is diagonal a7 b8 in this case so bishop goes to f2 bishop goes to h2 and bishop goes to a7 and now bishop goes to g1 so it is also possible in any other case i mean this idea of trying to deflect the bishop but the problem is that here this bishop simply has no place to hide from this attack so typically when the diagonal is long enough, it is possible just to go away with the bishop, still controlling the square of the promotion of the pawn or the square where the pawn wants to move. Here it is not possible because the diagonal is too short, only two squares, and that's it. So this means that bishop has to lose the control over promotion square and the next move will be b8 or taking the bishop with a decisive material advantage. That is the problem with this short diagonal. So we can conclude that the short diagonal is a big problem and it is the worst enemy of the bishop. So what to do if this uh, simple play doesn't help? So black has to try to prevent this winning maneuver. For this purpose, king goes to b5 and uh, we can see that black's plan is the following. So if the bishop has a threat of occupying a7 then king goes to a6 controlling a7 square if the bishop wants to occupy c7 square just covering the diagonal uh, king should be ready to come back to c6 and to control c7 square and at first glance it looks like black is just in time but white has a great maneuver so bishop goes to f2 first of all creating a concrete threat of bishop a7 of course black has to prevent that otherwise white wins just like in the line we already discussed so king goes to a6 here and now white plays a brilliant move bishop to c5 which wins the game so it is the greatest possible way to move in this position and uh, very soon you will understand why it is necessary to put the bishop exactly here on c5. So first of all let's have a look on the any other move. Let's say bishop goes to e3. In this case black's bishop goes to d6. Now white tries to use c7 square. So as we can see it is not possible to use a7 here. So white tries to see if it is possible just to get to c7 prior to black's king controls it so bishop g5 king b5 bishop d8 and king goes to c6 so here let's say if bishop goes to e7 then bishop goes to h2 and white achieved nothing we actually have almost the same position like the initial one the only difference is that the bishop of white here is placed on e7 but this is just a tiny difference 
Bishop c5. Let's have a look what happens here. Why it is so important to have this bishop exactly here. So bishop goes to f4 or any other square. Bishop goes to e7. King goes to b5. Bishop goes to d8. King goes to c6. Looks like everything is just the same like in the line that we discussed just a few seconds ago. But there is a huge difference. So now bishop again goes to g5 trying to deflect the bishop. And after bishop goes back to h2. So let's have a look what changed. When the bishop was on e7, c5 square was controlled by the king. Right. So it wasn't possible for white just to get to a7 quickly. Here, e3 square is not controlled by the king. So bishop simply goes here. And now we can see that black is just not in time to control a7. Very nice. So now white simply wins like in the line we already discussed. So bishop goes to a7, then to b8, then somewhere along this diagonal. And finally, when black's bishop is on a7, this bishop simply goes to one of the squares on diagonal g1, a7. And well, this is fatal because the bishop is being deflected or exchanged or captured with the further promotion. That is the point. So white actually made this long maneuver to force black to make a move with the bishop to have the tempo to deflect it. So everything started with this position, right? So here white can't really bother the bishop because it is on h2. It is not possible to attack this bishop to get to diagonal g1 a7 quickly. So white started with this maneuver. So bishop h4. Bishop here, king goes to a6, and now only bishop to c5. It is really critical to control d6 square. Otherwise, black's bishop occupies it, and then the king goes to c6, right? And the only possibility to deflect this bishop is to play bishop e7, but that is not enough because c5 will be controlled by that king. So exactly bishop to c5. Just controlling d6 and doesn't really matter where black's bishop goes. White performs this winning maneuver. Just like a magic, right? But, well, everything is logical. So, in our main line, the bishop went to f4. The same happens if bishop goes to anywhere else. So, by the way, king can't move in this position. Because if king moves, then we immediately win by placing the bishop on a7. So, it is important to play with the bishop. And, well, even if it goes to g3, white wins with the same maneuver. So bishop b7, king b5, bishop d8, king c6, then bishop h4 deflecting the bishop, and then quickly to a7 square. If bishop, instead of that, goes to e5, we win the same way. So uh, bishop e7, king b5, then bishop d8, king c6, and bishop f6. And again, when the bishop goes away, we can see that the square from where our bishop gets to a7 is not controlled by black skin. That is the point. So bishop d4. And, well, this maneuver, which exploits the drawback of the short diagonal. Let's have a look on the other example. That is also a very important exception from a general rule. In this situation, white also can't use g5 square because it is controlled twice by the king and the bishop. And the king also attacks h5 pawn. So everything is in accordance to the main method of defense. So active king and so on. We saw this already many, many times. But black's essential problem here is that white has the outside pass pawn. So actually, it is the pawn on the h file. And uh, this causes the serious problem which becomes fatal because the second diagonal from where this bishop of black can control the square h6 also appears very short to maneuver along it. And uh, well, it is possible to cause a zugzwang. That is a very important moment here. So first white, of course, starts with the standard bishop to g7 move. So since g5 is not accessible, then the only way for white to kick the bishop away from this diagonal is to play bishop to h6. Bishop goes d2, bishop goes to h6. And now uh, to be able to stop the pawn, the bishop has to go to b4. So bishop goes away, already creating a threat of h6. And now if the bishop goes to c3, 
then it's very easy for white to win the game because first of all white makes a great progress by promoting the pawn up to h7 and after that well it is not a big problem just to occupy g7 so black skin simply can't control this square also f6 is a great square to cover the diagonal so white has no problems winning the game so just a few moves and pawn promotes if the bishop occupies h8 square it is also not a problem so we just uh, blockade it uh, there in the corner of the board and force this bishop to be exchanged or just take this bishop and well in addition to extra queen we will have an extra bishop so after bishop e3 it is uh, important for black to occupy this diagonal in this case well white can't use uh, g7 square well at least right now but since that diagonal is quite short so again we have the evidence that proves that uh, the short diagonal is the worst enemy of the bishop in this type of hand games the bishop can't move right which means that uh, actually we can force the tsuk tsuang situation so usually uh, the diagonal that uh, consists of at least four squares is just enough to make a draw in such a situation so bishop has at least two squares to maneuver here bishop has no squares to maneuver it is very very important moment just to understand and to drive it home why this position is simply lost so now bishop goes to d4 there is still no threat of course of playing bishop g7 so pawn h5 is still vulnerable so white needs to do what to force the king going away from h5 pawn so actually white has to force the king to go away from g4 or h4 so the king has only two squares to maneuver here still controlling h5 so i starts with bishop e5 move just waiting waiting for king g4 move and after king g4 move bishop goes to f6 controlling h4 square and well king is already on g4 square which means that the king has to go away and uh, every king's move loses a control over h5 square which means that bishop g7 the main covering move here becomes possible and after bishop g7 of course exchange of bishops leads to absolutely winning pawn endgame because well the pawn simply promotes being supported by the king black skin despite it is the pawn on the h file can't occupy a drawish zone so it starts from f8 square and uh, well the best position is of course the corner of the board when it is not possible for white to make a progress so here the king simply controls everything and white is just in time to protect the pawn h5 if king attacks it with the help of h6 moreover it is the move that pushes the pawn towards the promotion square and finally if uh, bishop goes away well nothing can stop this h pawn from a promotion so h6 and automatically this pawn goes up to h8 square and being promoted so as a conclusion of this exceptions we should understand that the worst enemy of uh, the bishop is the short diagonal it doesn't really mean that if you have diagonal which is shorter then four squares it is uh, inevitably a losing position so it depends there are some examples when three squares on diagonal are just enough to make a draw so you have to keep thinking critically don't make this general conclusions right too general to be useful i mean so sometimes it is possible to make a draw even having such a short diagonal first of all second of all well we can make some considerations about pawns so if we deal with pawns on uh, d or e file it is even possible to allow this pawn to get to the seventh rank and when the pawn is already on the seventh rank if we have the active king it's possible usually to save the game with the help of this main drawish pattern if we have pawns on uh, b file or g file well it is extremely important to stop this pawn as soon as possible because if it gets to the seventh rank usually it is fatal because the second diagonal is too short if we deal with uh, pawns on a and h files it is also probably 
necessary to change the defensive strategy. So probably it is very hard to save the game unless your king has a chance just to blockade the pawn. So very, very basic option. And uh, finally, if we deal with uh, pawns on C and F files, well, again, the general rule is to stop the pawn as soon as possible. But if the pawn reaches the seventh rank, it is not necessarily a lost position. So it depends on the concrete placement of the kings. I hope this coverage of the basic theory of same color bishop endgames was really useful and now you understand these positions much better so that you will have a chance to make better decisions whenever these endgames arise in your practice. Thanks a lot for your attention. See you next lessons.